it is time. Time for the life of Aang. That's right, we're going to be gliding our way through the life and times of everyone's favorite air nomad slash avatar. Welcome back to Channel Frederator. Make sure you like the video if you like it and subscribe for more like this. Let's get this timeline rolling. Aang, born in 12 BG, hailed from the Air Nomads and held the crucial role of the Avatar during the Hundred Year War, succeeding Avatar Roku and preceding Avatar Korra. As the contemporary Avatar, Aang possessed the unique ability to master all four bending arts. Airbending, waterbending, earthbending, and firebending. Among the select few avatars, he distinguished himself by learning the ancient art of energy bending, being one of the first in many cycles to do so and actively applying the technique. Before the onset of the Hundred Year War, Aang found himself frozen in an iceberg for a century, emerging biologically unchanged at the age of 12 into a world entrenched in conflict. During his century-long absence, the Fire Nation initiated war against other nations and exterminated the peaceful Air Nomads. As the Avatar and the Last Airbender, Aang shouldered the responsibility of ending the war by mastering the remaining three elements and defeating Fire Lord Ozai. Despite the profound loss of his people and the weighty burdens he bore, Aang retained his kind and playful nature throughout the year-long struggle. After successfully defeating the Phoenix King, Aang entered into a romantic relationship with his close friend Katara. The couple eventually married and raised a family of three children. Early Life Born into the Air Nomads in 12 BG, Aang, unwittingly confirming his Avatar status by selecting the Avatar relics among numerous toys, was secretly taken away by the monks of the Southern Air Temple. As an Air Nomad, Aang extensively traveled the world during his childhood. Raised and educated at the Southern Air Temple, he considered Monkey Yatso his father figure, counselor, and tutor. Later, Aang, along with several other young Air Nomad boys, went to the Eastern Air Temple, where they each bonded with a Sky Bison as a lifelong companion. Aang initiated his enduring friendship with his soon-to-be Sky Bison Appa by offering him an apple. Mastering new bending techniques effortlessly, Aang demonstrated exceptional airbending skills from a young age. At six, he surpassed children twice his age, and by ten, he had outperformed even his own instructors. Aang achieved the esteemed status of an airbending master and earned his airbending tattoos by the age of 12, showcasing his remarkable talent with his native element. His invention of the air scooter further contributed to his recognition, making him the youngest airbending master in air nomad history. During his early years, Aang explored various temples, demonstrating familiarity with locations like the Western Air Temple. Additionally, he ventured into Earth Kingdom cities such as Omashu, where he formed a lasting friendship with the good-natured and eccentric Bumi. Aang also forged connections with children in the Fire Nation like Kuzan, engaging in adventures such as searching for a dragon in the mountains and safeguarding a dragon egg from poachers. As signs of an impending war emerged, Aang learned about his avatar status at the age of 12, four years earlier than the traditional age of 16. This revelation weighed heavily upon him, causing other children to distance themselves, leaving him to spend more time practicing airbending with the monks. Monk Gyatso, understanding the burden Aang carried, offered support, drawing from his past friendship with Avatar Roku, Aang's previous incarnation. Gyatso also sought to help Aang navigate the challenges of transitioning from childhood to adulthood by introducing elements of balance and enjoyment amidst the upheaval in his life. However, Aang later learned of his impending relocation to the Eastern Air Temple for further airbending training, a decision made to distance him from Monk Gyatso, whom the other monks deemed too lenient. Filled with fear and confusion, the young airbender chose to flee with his flying bison, Appa. Unfortunately, they encountered a storm, leading to a crash into the water. In a desperate attempt to survive, Aang entered a semi-conscious state, triggering the Avatar state. Utilizing a combination of airbending and waterbending, he froze both himself and Appa in a sphere of ice. This extraordinary act, driven by the Avatar state, kept him alive, albeit in an unconscious state, encased in the iceberg for approximately a hundred years as the war unfolded. Winter 99 AG a century later, Aang was discovered and released from the iceberg by siblings Katara and Sokka of the Southern Water Tribe. Swiftly forming a bond with them, he drew the immediate attention of Prince Zuko, tasked by his father, Fire Lord Ozai, to capture him. The newly established Team Avatar embarked on a quest to locate a waterbending master who could instruct Katara and Aang. While navigating their journey to the North Pole, they evaded Zuko's persistent attempts to apprehend them. During their efforts to assist Senlin Village in overcoming the spirit Heibai, Aang entered the spirit world, encountering Fang, the animal guide of his predecessor, Avatar Roku. 
He received guidance to visit the Avatar Temple on Crescent Island during the Winter Solstice for a conversation with Avatar Roku. Despite a confrontation with the Fire Sages, whose allegiance had shifted to the Fire Lord, Aang successfully communicated with Roku. The latter cautioned him about the imminent threat of Sozin's Comet, which would empower the Fire Nation enough to secure victory in the war. Encouraging Aang to master the remaining three elements before the summer's end when Sozin's Comet was scheduled to arrive, Roku warned that failure would result in an irreversible imbalance in the world. Later, when Admiral Zhao captured Aang, Zuko, adopting the alias of the Blue Spirit, intervened to free him with his own plans to capture the Avatar. The trio of Aang, Sokka, and Katara deepened their bonds as they journeyed to the Northern Water Tribe. During this time, Aang developed a growing affection for Katara. Upon reaching the Northern Water Tribe, Aang was dismayed to discover that the waterbending master, Paku, refused to teach combat waterbending to women, assigning Katara to healing instead. Despite initial challenges, she successfully convinced Paku to change his stance, and both she and Aang began learning from him. However, their peaceful period was short-lived as Zhao orchestrated an attack on the Northern Water Tribe with a formidable fleet of ships. Following Princess Yue's suggestion, Aang sought guidance from the Ocean and Moon Spirits, patrons of the Northern Water Tribe. In the spirit world, Aang discovered from a spirit named Ko that the spirits existed in the mortal world, but his physical form had been captured by Zuko. Although Aang's friends rescued him, Zhao arrived at the spirit oasis, killing the Moon Spirit, the source of power for waterbenders. Determined to protect the Water Tribe, Aang merged with the Ocean Spirit, decimating Fire Nation ships, securing victory in the battle and forcing them to retreat. Spring 100 AG Aang and his companions departed from the north on a ship accompanied by Paku and others, with the plan to reach an Earth Kingdom base. From there, they intended to be escorted to Omashu for Aang's earthbending training under King Bumi. Opting to travel independently, they faced challenges at the fortress, where the commanding general attempted to force Aang into the Avatar state, leading to chaos and destruction. Upon reaching Omashu, they discovered that the city had been captured by the Fire Nation. In their quest to save the king, Aang and friends evacuated citizens to aid the Omashu resistance, unintentionally bringing along the governor's son, Tom Tom. Upon receiving a messenger hawk's report that the governor would exchange the king for his son, the team discovers that Princess Azula had reneged on the deal, triggering a skirmish between the Avatar and the princess's allies. Though Aang located King Bumi, the king refused to leave Omashu, encouraging Aang to seek a master embodying neutral Jing. Before departing on this quest, the team returned Tom Tom. In Gaoling, they learned of a tournament showcasing reputedly the best earthbenders globally, hoping to find an earthbending teacher for Aang. At the tournament's conclusion, they witnessed a final battle between a popular contestant and the reigning champ, a blind girl. Recognizing her as the same person from the vision in the foggy swamp, Aang noticed her technique of patient observation before attacking, easily defeating her opponent. The ringmaster offered a reward to anyone daring enough to face the blind bandit, prompting Aang to accept the challenge with the intention of conversing with the girl. However, she ignored him after he surprised her by deflecting her attack with airbending. Discovering that the girl was a member of the Beifong family, the group paid a visit to their estate under the guise of an official avatar visit. However, it became evident that the Earthbender, the blind girl named Toph, was concealing her true abilities from her family. When Toph and Aang were abducted, she skillfully repelled the attackers, unveiling her prowess to her parents. Consequently, she left home to join Aang's group. Due to Earth being the elemental opposite of air, Aang faced challenges in mastering earthbending. However, on the very first day of training, he achieved stability and successfully demonstrated earthbending. Shortly thereafter, Team Avatar encountered a Fire Nation ambush, leading to their separation. While searching for Katara, Aang, Toph, and Sokka apprehended a Fire Nation soldier. This encounter left Aang disturbed, especially as the young man fervently believed that the Air Nomads were malevolent. Fortunately, Team Avatar was eventually reunited with the assistance of Jiang's pirates. During a brief getaway to Misty Palm's oasis, the group was guided to Wan Shi Tong's library situated in the heart of the Siwang Desert. There, they acquired crucial information about an upcoming solar eclipse that would render firebenders powerless. Upon leaving the library, they were confronted with the unfortunate loss of Appa, who had been seized and sold by desert tribesmen. Discovering Appa's plight from the captors, a furious Aang entered the Avatar state, decimating the tribe's sand sailors. Despite Appa's absence, the group aimed to reach Ba Sing Se to inform the Earth King and strategize an invasion of the Fire Nation. Upon navigating out of the desert and traversing the Serpent's Pass, they encountered a massive Fire Nation drill, attempting to breach the outer wall of Ba Sing Se. 
Initially hesitant, General Sung eventually accepted the group's aid after witnessing the swift defeat of his Terra team by Tai Li and Mai. Through a collaborative effort, the group successfully thwarted Azula's team and disabled the drill. Upon arriving in Ba Sing Se, Aang uncovered a conspiracy within the city. The true authority lay not with the Earth King, but with the Grand Secretary at Long Feng, who commanded the Dai Li, Ba Sing Se's clandestine police force. Suspecting that Appa was held captive, the group infiltrated Long Feng's secret base in Lake Lao Gai. After successfully locating and freeing Appa, they confronted the palace and exposed Long Feng's betrayal to the Earth King Kue. Persuading the king to apprehend Long Feng and strategize for an invasion coinciding with the eclipse, the king's men discovered a message for Aang from Guru Pathik tied to Appa's horn in Long Feng's office. The message implored Aang to meet the guru at the Eastern Air Temple to master the Avatar state. Upon reaching the temple, Pathik guided Aang in unlocking all of his chakras except the Thought Chakra, as he was unwilling to sever his connection with Katara after foreseeing her in peril. Reuniting with Sokka and Toph on their return to the city, Aang discovered that Azula, Mai, and Tai Li had infiltrated the city. Upon reuniting with Katara in the Crystal Catacombs, a confrontation ensued with Zuko and Katara, leading to the arrival of the Dai Li, who had aligned themselves with the Fire Nation Princess. Aang managed to enter the Avatar state successfully, but he fell victim to a lightning bolt unleashed by Azula. The powerful attack made it impossible to reopen his seventh chakra, resulting in mortal wounds as he remained in the Avatar state. This severed the connection between the Avatar spirit and the world, posing a threat to the continuity of the Avatar cycle. Katara, with the unexpected assistance of Iroh, caught Aang as he descended, allowing them to escape the city on Appa. Utilizing water from the spirit oasis, Katara revived him, re-establishing the Avatar spirit, though he remained severely injured. Summer 100 AG For several weeks, Aang remained in a state of unconsciousness as he recuperated from his injury. He awoke in the spirit world, embarking on an extensive journey to reconnect with his four most recent incarnations to facilitate the healing of the Avatar spirit. Upon waking, Aang had no recollection of his time in the spirit world. Finding himself on a Fire Nation vessel with hair and fearing captive, he soon discovered that Team Avatar and their allies were in control of the ship. Arriving in the Fire Nation, the team prepared for the Eclipse Day invasion, adopting civilian disguises. However, they encountered a mysterious assassin, later named Combustion Man, who relentlessly pursued them across the Fire Nation. On the day of the Eclipse, Aang, Sokka, and Toph sought Fire Lord Ozai in an underground bunker beneath the capital, but Azula thwarted their efforts throughout the Eclipse. Realizing the day was lost, they retreated to the Western Air Temple with their younger allies. Upon reaching the temple, the group encountered Zuko, who expressed his desire to join their ranks. Initially met with rejection, Zuko proved his worth by aiding them in defeating Combustion Man. Consequently, Aang agreed to have Zuko as his firebending instructor. Upon learning that Zuko had lost touch with the essence of fire due to his defection, the duo sought out the Sun Warriors to understand the original roots of firebending. After undergoing a trial with Dragons Ron and Shaw, Zuko and Aang gained insight into a more positive aspect of firebending, leading to significant improvement in their skills. However, when Azula launched an attack on the Western Air Temple following the rescue mission at the Boiling Rock, Aang and his companions were compelled to flee once more. While Aang and his companions initially hoped to postpone the confrontation with the Fire Lord until after the impending arrival of Sozin's Comet, the revelation of Fire Lord Ozai's plan to obliterate the Earth Kingdom prompted them to reconsider. Aang, driven by his Air Nomad principles valuing all life, grappled with the idea of taking Ozai's life. Seeking guidance, he journeyed to an island near Ember Island, where he encountered a lion turtle that imparted the wisdom of energy bending. Empowered with this newfound knowledge, Aang engaged in a decisive battle with the Fire Lord in Wulong Forest. A protruding rock against his wound triggered the Avatar state once again. Despite overpowering Ozai, Aang chose mercy and, utilizing his energy bending abilities, stripped the Fire Lord of his bending. With the war concluded, Aang attended Zuko's coronation and both pledged to bring peace to the world. To restore balance, Team Avatar collaborated with Earth King Kue in Ba Sing Se after Zuko's coronation, launching the Harmony Restoration Movement to remove Fire Nation colonies from the Earth Kingdom. Subsequently, Aang and Katara initiated a romantic relationship, sealed with a passionate kiss at the Jasmine Dragon. 100-102 AG after the Hundred Year War, Team Avatar dispersed and Aang dedicated himself to global peace restoration. His efforts included facilitating the return of numerous Fire Nation colonists. However, a year later, Zuko unexpectedly withdrew support for decolonization, causing concern. Aang and Katara visited Yu Dao, where conflicting views emerged between the Fire Lord and Avatar. 
Zuko perceived the oldest colonies as thriving communities with the right to exist, while Aang saw them as an ongoing threat to balance. Despite the disagreement, Aang and Katara committed to seeking a peaceful resolution, opting to involve Earth King Kuei. In Ba Sing Se, Aang was pleasantly surprised by the official Avatar Aang fan club, dedicated to Air Nomad teachings. However, the meeting with Kuei turned sour, leading to the king advocating forceful removal of the colonies. Rushing back to Yu Dao, Aang and Katara tried persuading the locals to leave before potential conflict. Faced with resistance from both colonists and Earth Kingdom nationalists, Aang struggled for a peaceful resolution until the battle for Yu Dao erupted. Fearing the need to harm Zuko to prevent war, Aang eventually concluded that maintaining strict separation between nations was no longer feasible, acknowledging Zuko's perspective. Thus, Aang halted the battle, persuaded Kuei to allow the old colonies to stay as self-governing entities, and transformed the official Avatar Aang fan club into the first Air Acolytes to revive Air Nomad culture. After resolving the Yudao crisis, Aang, Katara, and Sokka joined Zuko in the quest to find his long-lost mother, Ursa. To do so, they reluctantly collaborated with Azula, who possessed crucial information about Ursa's location. A tense encounter with a wolf spirit marked the beginning of their journey to the remote village of Hira'a. While staying with two friendly actors, Noren and Noriko, the group lost track of Zuko's mother, but discovered that Ursa's ex-boyfriend, Ikem, had disappeared in the nearby Forgetful Valley. In this spiritually significant forested area, Aang and his companions encountered Rafa and Misu, Water Tribe siblings seeking the aid of the powerful spirit known as the Mother of Faces. Aang ventured into the spirit world, persuading the ancient spirit to grant them one wish. Choosing to use the wish to help Rafa and Misu, Team Avatar's plans were disrupted by Azula, who seized the wish for herself. The Mother of Faces revealed that she had helped Ikem and Ursa start anew by granting them new faces, those of Noren and Noriko, while erasing Ursa's memories. Azula fled, pursued by Zuko and Sokka, leaving Aang and Katara to convince the Mother of Faces to grant a second wish for Rafa and Misu. A conflict ensued, with the Mother feeling disrespected and sending spirits to attack them. Amidst the chaos, Aang accidentally uncovered Rafa's true face, taken by Ko, the son of the Mother of Faces. Reminding her of the Avatar who had once spared Ko, Aang persuaded the Mother to grant Rafa a new face. Subsequently, the spirit restored Ursa's face and memories. Aang and his friends accompanied Zuko, Ursa, Noren, and their daughter Kiyi back to the Fire Nation capital. Following this, Team Avatar participated in the remaining discussions about Yu Dao's future, where Aang had an encounter with the spirit of Avatar Yang Chen but couldn't hear her. This meeting motivated him to revive Yang Chen's festival. During this process, Aang, along with Team Avatar and the Air Acolytes, uncovered the construction of the Earthen Fire Refinery and a settlement on previously sacred Air Nomad lands. Aang opposed this development, leading to tensions with Toph, who advocated for change. Despite challenges posed by the factory, the Avatar and the Air Acolytes persevered in their efforts to celebrate Yang Chen's festival. During a ceremonial meal, Aang finally connected with Yang Chen, only to have their conversation interrupted by an earthquake. Hastening to the earthen fire refinery, he discovered that Katara, Toph, and others were trapped in a mine beneath the factory. With the assistance of Toph's students, Aang successfully reached the group. Later, he reconnected with Yang Chen, learning that Yang Chen's festival was initially established to appease the spirit general Old Iron, who sought vengeance for the alleged murder of his spirit friend Lady Tianhai by humans. The construction of the factory reunited his anger. When General Old Iron attacked, Aang attempted negotiation until the spirit threatened to harm Toph and her students. In response, the Air Nomad inflicted a deep wound on the spirit, prompting General Old Iron to retreat. Aang regretted this outcome, contemplating whether General Old Iron might be correct in asserting that humans and spirits can't coexist. However, his optimism was restored when Lady Tianhai appeared, revealing she hadn't truly perished and always loved humanity and its progressive ways. Consequently, the Avatar decided to transform Yang Chen's festival into the Spirit's Friendship Festival, preserving air nomad traditions while adapting to the changing times. After resolving the crisis at the Earthen Fire Refinery, Aang journeyed to the Fire Nation to assist Zuko, who was dealing with reported dark spirit attacks. Aang discovered that several children had gone missing while political extremists led by Ukana were rallying opposition against the Fire Lord. In an attempt to understand the spirit's discontent, Aang, along with Zuko, Mai, and Kei Lo, explored the Dragonbone Catacombs, where forgotten knowledge about the Fire Nation's history was stored. Contacting a Kamurikage spirit at the first Fire Lord's Crypt, Aang was informed that the Kamurikage had not returned to haunt the Fire Nation since ancient times. This revelation led Aang to deduce that the kidnappers were human imposters. 
The following night, the pseudo Kamurikage abducted Zuko's sister, Kiyi. Although Aang and his companions couldn't prevent the abduction, they discover that Azula was leading the imposters. Aang played a vital role in locating and rescuing the missing children, despite the Kamurikage imposters managing to escape. Aang then journeyed to the Southern Pole region to spend time with Sokka and Katara. During his stay, the Avatar had to contend with the Southern Water Tribe nationalists led by Gilak, who aimed to overthrow Katara's father, Hakoda, as the head chieftain of the South. After assisting in thwarting an initial nationalist attack, Aang participated in an international meeting convened by Hakoda. Seizing the opportunity, Gilak and his supporters launched another assault, but Aang and Katara successfully foiled their attempt to kidnap Hakoda. Nevertheless, the Nationalists managed to capture Earth King Kuei, leading to a tense prisoner exchange at the Bridge of No Return. The situation quickly escalated into a skirmish, resulting in the defeat of the Nationalists. During the clashes, Aang intervened to save Hakoda and Molina from a perilous fall. Shortly after, Aang and his companions journeyed to the Earthen Fire Refinery, discovering the emergence of a city named Cranefish Town. Lao Bei Fong requested the Avatar's assistance in resolving conflicts between benders and non-benders within the settlement. When several factories owned by non-benders, including the Earthen Fire Refinery, fell victim to sabotage, Team Avatar decided to launch an investigation. Aang and his friends uncovered the involvement of a councilwoman, Li Ling, who was orchestrating the Bender supremacist movement. They captured her after infiltrating her secret rally. However, Aang faced a dilemma when Toph urged him to strip Li Ling of her bending to quash the movement, a fate considered worse than death by the conspirator. Before Aang could decide, Li Ling escaped and initiated an armed uprising. The Avatar played a role in suppressing the insurgency and ultimately chose not to remove the bending abilities of the supremacists. He concluded that such an action wouldn't address the deeper societal issues, mistrust, and ideological differences fueling the conflict. Aang and Katara decided to remain in Cranefish Town, viewing it as a unique place and aspiring to contribute to its development into a better community. Later Life after the conclusion of the Hundred Year War and the Harmony Restoration Movement conflict, Aang successfully maintained peace. Collaborating with Fire Lord Zuko and their friends, they transformed the former Fire Nation colonies into the United Republic of Nations. The capital, once Cranefish Town, was now named Republic City, and it became a melting pot for people from all nations. Aang, in tandem with Zuko, dedicated himself to fostering the growth of Republic City into a prosperous and secure environment, addressing challenges arising from the city's early days, including a rise in bending-related criminal activities. In his quest to revive the Air Nomad's culture, Aang explored the ruins of the Air Temples for historical documents. He endeavored to preserve his people's cuisine by reconstructing old recipes based on his memories and partially damaged texts discovered in the temples. The task became more challenging due to the extinction of several unique vegetables and fruits cultivated by the Air Nomads, compelling him to use ingredients from other nations. Aang took the lead in restoring the four ancient air temples and establishing a fifth air temple, Air Temple Island, near the heart of Republic City. This island served as a sanctuary for a herd of surviving flying bison and a new winged lemur variant, the ring-tailed winged lemur, both of which he encountered sometime after the war. During this time frame, Aang entered matrimony with Katara, and together they welcomed three children, Bumi, a non-bender who later manifested airbending abilities in 171 AG, Kaya, a waterbender, and Tenzin, an airbender. When Tenzin reached the age of five, Aang initiated the completion of a series of stories and keepsakes from his life, intending them for his youngest son to peruse after his passing. Despite the prevailing world peace, familial challenges emerged for the Avatar. Balancing his role in preserving Air Nomad culture, Aang dedicated more time and extensive travels to instill Air Nomad traditions in Tenzin, his sole airbending child, which inadvertently created a sense of distance with his elder siblings. Nevertheless, Kaya felt comfortable enough to disclose her sexual orientation to him, receiving wholehearted support from Aang as it aligned with the acceptance in Air Nomad culture. In 128 AG, Republic City grappled with a surge in criminal activity orchestrated by the infamous crime boss Yakon. Aang, recognizing the urgency of the situation, deemed it essential to collaborate with the chief of police at that time, Tong Bei Fong, to apprehend Yakon, a master bloodbender who had eluded legal consequences for an extended period. Aang, alongside Toph and her squad of metalbending officers, successfully captured the crime lord at Kuang's cuisine. Despite Yakon's lack of resistance during the arrest, he boldly asserted that he would evade the charges once again. Aang later attended his trial, sitting in the gallery behind the defendant as the court pronounced him guilty. The verdict mandated a life sentence, but before the sentence could be executed, Yakon exploited his bloodbending abilities to incapacitate everyone in the courtroom, rendering them unconscious. 
Although Aang demonstrated resilience, he eventually succumbed, losing consciousness after Yakon manipulated his powers to levitate the Avatar and hurl him against the stairs leading to the court's platform. Nevertheless, utilizing the power of the Avatar state, Aang regained his senses, enabling him to chase down the criminal. With a skillful air swipe, he effectively thwarted Yakon's escape by separating his mount from the carriage. Aang, riding in an augmented air scooter, found himself subdued once again by Yakon's formidable bloodbending, now with lethal intent. Activating the Avatar state empowered Aang to break free from Yakon's control, and he promptly encased Yakon in an earth shell before employing energy bending to permanently strip him of his bending abilities. During the mid-130s, Tenzin found himself in custody after apprehending vandals at the Republic City docks. Aang arrived at the police headquarters and, addressing Toph, expressed his apologies and requested to take responsibility for both Tenzin and the Vandals. While flying back on Appa, Tenzin apologized, but Aang reassured him that he could never be a source of disappointment. Aang then introduced Tenzin to conflict resolution inspired by air nomad practices. This involved Tenzin expressing how he felt wronged, giving the Vandals an opportunity to apologize, cleaning the air, and executing the resolution. Observing Tenzin and the Vandals perform the cleansing ritual at the airbender gates, Aang remarked to Katara that it might not always be as straightforward, but Katara acknowledged that Tenzin was still young and should deal with simpler challenges for the time being. Having spent a century encased in ice while in the Avatar state, Aang's life force was significantly depleted, and the toll of this experience became increasingly apparent in his later years. As his health declined and the realization of his imminent end settled in, Aang entrusted the Order of the White Lotus with the responsibility of finding and safeguarding the next Avatar. Ultimately, at the relatively young biological age of 66, Aang passed away. He was then reborn into the form of Korra, a spirited, fiery, and defiant girl from the Southern Water Tribe. Legacy a colossal statue honoring Avatar Aang was erected on Aang Memorial Island, a small landmass situated in Yue Bay. The statue portrays a teenage Aang donned an air nomad monk attire, wielding a staff adorned with the airbending symbol atop it, while overseeing the city he established alongside his companions. This monument, symbolizing peace and benevolence, was crafted and gifted by the Fire Nation. In adherence to the customary practice, an additional statue of Aang found its place in the inner sanctum of the Southern Air Temple, ensuring the continuity of the line of statues representing the avatars of the past. Positioned at the center of the assembly, Aang's statue became an integral part of this sacred tradition. Appearances in Avatar Korra's Life At the age of 17, Korra transitioned from the security of the Southern Water Tribe compound to the vibrant streets of Republic City. In moments of grave peril, as she teetered on the edge of unconsciousness, visions of Aang's encounter with Yakon haunted her. Through these visions, it seemed Aang sought to forewarn Korra about the impending danger posed by Yakon's son, Councilman Tarlok. However, it later emerged that Aang's true intention was to alert her about the threat from Amon. The first inadvertent summoning of Aang's spirit occurred when Korra reached a profound low point after losing her bending abilities. In their conversation, Aang clarified that he was there because Korra had requested his presence, as she finally connected with her spiritual self by embracing the profound change that came with hitting rock bottom. With the support of the previous avatars appearing behind him, Aang, filled with compassion, employed energy bending to restore Korra's bending and imparted the knowledge of this to her. Following Korra's memory loss due to a spiritual infection, Aang manifested before her, taking control of her reflection and reinforcing her identity as the avatar before making way for Roku to appear. During Unalak's assault on Rava, Aang was envisioned among the avatar lineup witnessed by Korra before the restoration of her bending, and his connection was the first to be severed. Appearance in Tenzin's Life When Tenzin found himself trapped in the fog of lost souls, grappling with uncertainty about his ability to usher in a new era for airbenders and live up to his father's legacy, a vision of Aang materialized before him. Expressing his doubts, Tenzin apologized to his father, acknowledging that he could never match Aang's stature. To Tenzin's surprise, the apparition of Aang concurred with this sentiment, advising him against attempting to replicate his father's persona and clinging to an inaccurate self-perception. Aang emphasized that Tenzin should not strive to be him, but should embrace his own unique identity. In a transformative moment, Aang's image shifted to that of Tenzin himself, prompting his son to step out from the shadows of his father and forge his own path. And that, my friends, is the story of Aang. Timeline from end to end. So, what did you think? What's your favorite part of Aang's story? Which element is your favorite? How about which member of Team Avatar, huh? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Remember to like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more like this. Thanks for watching and remember, Frederator loves you.